Hello there, thanks for tuning in to the Oxygen Alliance YouTube channel where we share the different aspects of oxygen concentrator assessment, use and maintenance. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell. My name is Mwari Lungu and today I'm going to be explaining on how to disassemble, clean and reassemble a rotary valve from Devilbis concentrators. The rotary valve found in the Deville 515 and 525 are of the same model, so this video covers uh, for both of these models. So with me here is a rotary valve that we took from a Deville 525 oxygen concentrator. So in order to successfully disassemble, clean and reassemble the rotary valve, you need to have the right tools and these include the T27 Tox key. You will also need the T25 Tox key. You will also need the T10 Tox key. And a flat screwdriver that you will use to poke out some of the smaller components. So you will also need a clean cloth that you will use to clean the internal components of the rotary valve once it has been disassembled. You will also need benzene and a toothbrush to, that you will use to clean the whole effect sensor just in case it has some dirt on it. So in case you have issues with gears or the o-ring in your rotary valve, you also need to have the replacement kits for those components. Right, so getting into the disassembly now. So firstly, uh, you need to remove the whole effect sensor so that we don't damage it during the disassembly. Uh, since the, the thing is fragile, so we need to make sure that uh, it's safe. Alright, so once you remove the whole effect sensor, the next thing is you, ne you need to remove the bottom cover of the rotary valve. So you need a T27 to remove the screws that are on the bottom of the valve. Okay, so once you remove uh, the bottom cover, you can now move on to removing the stepper motor on the rotary valve. So you will need a T25 in order to remove this. So once you remove the two screws, you can now pull out the stepper motor and as you can see, it comes off uh, together with uh, the top cover. So the stepper motor is screwed to the top cover, that's why it comes off together. So the next thing is you need to remove the gears and the o-ring, so you can just pull them out, uh, they are not screwed down in any way. And once you do that, you can now flip over the rotary valve and then we'll remove the small screw on the bottom of uh, the valve that holds uh, the three hole disc together. So you need a T10 in order to remove this one. So once the screw comes off, you can now remove the three hole uh, disc using a small flat screwdriver so you might need to use a little bit of force here so don't be afraid to apply some so once you push it up a couple of times it now comes off nicely and we can now see inside where we have the three channels of air so these are the air passages so two of them are the feed ports and then one of them is the exhaust port so after that you can just push on the small rod that you see on the middle of the valve and that uh, pushes out the one hole disc on the other side. So the rod is connected to the one hole disc so it comes off together as one thing. 
So once you remove that, you also have an o-ring on the other side, so you can also use a flat screwdriver to just push that out if it doesn't uh, come out together with uh, the top part. So after you remove the o-ring, then you can move on to uh, removing the spring holders now. So we have two spring holders on each side, two on each hole. So just push on one side and then the spring holder on the other end comes off. So make sure you, you do it carefully because uh, sometimes you have some tension on the spring and that uh, pushes it off. So then the spring just slides off and then in order to remove the spring holders on the other side, just use a flat screwdriver to push it from the other side. So now that we have everything removed, we can now move on to cleaning the components inside. So the first thing that we need to clean is uh, the rotary valve housing. So make sure that you are using a clean cloth to uh, remove all the dirt that you find inside of uh, the rotary valve. Make sure that uh, you also get inside the hose so that you remove all the dirt that you can find inside these small holes. Alright, so after cleaning the housing, we can now move on to cleaning the springs. So it doesn't matter which order you clean them as long as all the components are cleaned up. So once you clean the springs, you can now move on to cleaning the rest of the other components. So make sure that everything is nicely cleaned up. Alright, so now that we are done with cleaning the other components, we can now move on to cleaning the hole effect sensor. So when you have some debris uh, blocking the hole effect sensor, sometimes it starts to misbehave. So you need some benzene to clean the hole effect sensor. So benzene is a chemical that uh, easily evaporates, uh, similar to um, methylated spirit. So make sure you either you can either use benzene or methylated spirit to clean the hole effect sensor. So we we'll use our toothbrush uh, in order to get to brush off all the debris on the hole effect sensor. So once you have the whole effect sensor cleaned up and, we, and uh, along with everything else cleaned up, we can now get uh, back to putting back together our rotary valve. So the first thing that you need to do is to put back the springs. So before putting back the springs, you need to make sure that you have the spring holders inserted on one side of the rotary valve housing. So just push them in slightly and then they have a small rubber around them that holds them in place. After that, you can now flip it over and push in uh, the springs on the other side. So 
So we just drop the springs inside the hose and then you can now get the remaining two spring holders and then you also push them uh, in order to secure the spring in place. So once the springs are nicely fitted, you can now move on to putting back the other components. So we'll start with the one hole uh, disc. So just slide it in nicely and uh, once you feel that it has reached uh, its position, you can now move on to adding the three hole disc on the other side of the valve. So once you push it in and rotate it and you can feel that it's feeling smooth, you can now uh, replace the screw that holds together uh, the two parts together. So remember that uh, we use a T10 Torx key to tighten this screw. So after you tighten it, we can now move on to putting back the gears and uh, the o-ring on the other side of the stepper motor. So after you replace the gears, we can now get our stepper motor and then uh, put it back on top. So make sure that uh, the gear connected to the stepper motor is uh, nicely sliding into the gears that you have uh, in, on the housing of the stepper motor. So once you have that in place, you can now replace the screws that hold together uh, the stepper motor to the valve housing. So after you screw down the stepper motor, we can now move on to replacing the o-ring on the other side of the valve. And then once we have that valve in place, we can now close it up. So just make sure that the o-ring is sitting nicely in its position. And then we will now uh, replace our cover on the bottom side of the stepper motor. So remember that we use a Torx key number 27 yeah, for these uh, screws. So once you have everything screwed up, you can see that it's now nicely closed up. So we can move on to replacing the whole effect sensor. So we'll make sure that the whole effect sensor is pointing in the right orientation because uh, if you screw it down in the wrong orientation, then the sensor won't be able to detect the magnet that is used for homing. So we'll make sure that the whole effect sensor is connected in the right way. So once you have that in place, uh, you now have everything ready and you can now take it back into the oxygen concentrator. And hopefully that will fix every problem or any problem that you had. So this is all from me. Thanks for watching this video and we hope to see you again in our next video tutorial.